If you've ever accidentally scrolled through the men's coaching hashtag on TikTok, you've undoubtedly encountered a fair share of creators who bravely act as the modern day saviors of masculinity. How? By reinforcing dated stereotypes, labeling themselves as motivational speakers, and launching generic online courses that help spread their toxic white dude wisdom in order to combat today's unfair suppression of quote unquote real men. In fact, these coaches, despite all evidence regarding the global distribution of power and privilege hold the opinion that in 2024 there are no other groups of people as misfortunate as cisgender straight men. And you know what? I agree with them. I literally can't think of anything worse. Look at how they dress and the things that they watch on TV and tell me that those aren't the most depressing creatures ever to crawl across the earth's crust. I barely survived being matched with a cishet man for a secret Santa gift exchange. How long do you think I would last if I had to live my life as one of them? <laughs> Thankfully, with the rise in popularity of social media alpha males, like Andrew Tate and Dan Bilzerian, manly men everywhere have a blueprint on how to uphold the gold standard of masculinity so that all of these guys being dudes can once again hold their heads high, armed with the pseudoscience that fosters their sense of biological superiority with the same misinformed confidence and undeserved swagger of every other unfair advantage they receive in life. <laughs> Today, we're recognizing the aspiring Andrew Tates of TikTok. These are smaller creators who have their own completely unique yet totally unoriginal take on how to teach the guys to be guys once again. Make guys men again. Alexander Finnegan. That's the man's name. So strap on your dicks to learn how each learned sage on this list preaches the gospel of modern day masculinity through the use of highly confusing and ineffective metaphors, an alarming sense of nostalgia for a time period when segregation was a thing, and fancy pants fashion that declare the bank I belong to has vastly over extended my credit on today's super straight, testosterone flooded, semen soaked installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web so that we can break it down like the beta bro in your CrossFit class and uh, verbally accuse it of being an inferior being who has feminine tendencies, which as far as I'm concerned is the same as being a piece of by looking at each individual clip <laughs> and deciding if that's satire. If it's, what did I say? I think I already said it all. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big, oh my God. I really lost the script on this one. <laughs> make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That way I know you wanna see even more of this, whatever this is. But most importantly, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button. That way you never miss new videos from me. Hit the thumbs up, bell icon or whatever. The one that lets me know that you wanna know whenever I have a new video coming out of my mouth into your face like vomit out of a bug a bug a fly who vomits on its food and melts it so they can eat it again that's who i am today anyway i obviously knew who andrew tate was and if you don't know who andrew tate was then he was like one of the first toxic masculinity influencers to come to the forefront of pop culture mainly known in the mainstream media because of his recent indictment i believe he's on house arrest at this point for accusations or you know actual charges of human trafficking which by all accounts if we believe victims, which we do here on this channel, are absolutely horrifying and true. It's like the use of relational abuse, romantic partner abuse, to then foray somebody into this like sort of webcam model sex worker through no choice of their own. If you want to be a sex worker, I love that for you. But if you are not hoping to do that at the same rate or in the same way that your romantic partner is coercing you to do in any way, then no mama, we gotta make a change. And Andrew Tate is scum as far as I'm concerned. He looks like a foreskin and that's what he probably smells like. So it makes me mad. He's there on house arrest with his Segway and his bubble guns and his literal little boy birthday party toys, but he still has this huge audience and he makes almost $800 million through his social media presence, but also through these courses he sells on how to be an alpha male, which are basically pickup courses, like teaching men how to bag the hottest women possible by reinforcing horrible gender stereotypes and sexist beliefs. So of course, with Andrew Tate, there come a thousand other other underlings who want to be just like him. You have the people who are promoting Andrew Tate's content, then you have the people who are trying to replicate it. Dan Bilzerian, the former like playboy of Instagram, who we have now since found out had not been the, the brilliant businessman that we thought he was, but actually was just taking his father's paycheck from prison when his father was illegally working for that company that he started. He's launching a course about how to 
teach guys to be guys, which is essentially the like dog whistle. If, if you're like an incel, a red pilling incel who's like, oh yeah, men are just not men today and women are taking too much like of the piece of the pie. And it's like, how, in what world do you think women are getting an unfair advantage over cisgender straight men in the way that they're constantly assaulted by you in the way that they are paid 70 cents on the dollar for you? Like, where is the advantage? Where's the advantage? We would love to see it. So today we're gonna start by looking at a, I don't know, I'm just gonna refer to them as men's coaches. They all have something different in their Instagram bio when really I don't like any of this. I don't like any of this. Anything that they stand for with sexism and misogyny, like homophobia, transphobia are soon to follow, which we see pretty soon on with our first example here. Sebastian Enges, Enges, Inges, Ings. We don't know. All we know is the vest and he's about to tell us about it. Gossip is poison. I almost never see men gossip, although in this day and age, they're changing rapidly. But normally I never see men gossip that isn't tied to a woman somewhere. And don't believe me, back test what the f I'm saying. If you had a bunch of guys sitting around gossiping, they'd look at each other and be like, what the f are we doing, right? It's not generally gonna happen. You laugh, because most of you are like, yeah, and if you're not laughing, it's like, well, f you may want to check your orientation. <laughs> Ooh, good call. I just checked and I'm gay. But after sitting through this seminar, I know that's not my ideal orientation. I would rather be on a spaceship that's flying into the sun. But Sebastian, please help me understand. Does gossiping make me a woman or does it make me gay? And fellas, is it gay to be a woman? I can't figure it out because I'm already having PTSD flashbacks from the sound of those girls in the back of the class giggling at his homophobic comment. If Sebastian wasn't a masculinity coach, he would have been great as my seventh grade English teacher who desperately needed 12 year olds to like him. But unfortunately for us, he encountered his first Bloomingdale's tuxedo vest early enough in life that he was led down the path of becoming the wise thought leader we see before us in this rented lecture hall, dressed like Colonel Sanders' eldest son on the first day of his sexual assault trial. Since he is such an informed expert, can he cite his sources for this toxic gossip train demographic? Women are the only ones who gossip, according to him. Uh, well, according to actual scientific studies, men, tend to gossip up to 30% more than women. There was a study from the University of California, Riverside that showed men gossip at least as much as women do, although they tend to not even consider it gossip. They call it networking or venting or other words besides gossip, which are just assigned to women talking about anybody who's not in the room. There are also studies that suggested that men share confidential information within three hours of hearing it on average, whereas women often on average go three hours and 40 minutes. That's a diff also with social media, there have been surveys indicating that 33% of men engage in mobile gossip every day compared to 26% of women. What is the truth, Andrew Sebastian Tate? Backtest that theory. Get a group full of men together and they'll be like, what are we doing here? You're gossiping because you decided to gossip because you love gossiping, you little f <laughs> Sorry. I was actually gonna make this video about something completely different, but then I came across some sort of video from Sebastian here with his suit vest or whatever they call it from the men's section of Target. And it's like, oh God. And as I looked back through his previous videos, I was like, it's always been a thing. Ugh. This is not astrophysics here. What are people paying to see you say this kind of stuff? Obviously enough for you to buy these mid-level fashions. I was negative $187 in my business bank account in 2012. I'd taken myself off my salary. And the that's as much of that story as I'm going to allow you to tell because I just caught a glimpse of that ratty little ponytail on the back of your head, which indicates to me that there is nothing from within inside of your skull cavity that I want entering my airspace, be it an unoriginal hustle culture quote or your pre-workout protein shake breath that makes every room you enter feel like an episode of Joe Rogan's podcast has recently been recorded there. Did you think the black and white filter would hide that hideous hairstyle? The one that you copied from Brad Pitt's struggle with turning 40? Listen, he has has nothing, he has no qualifications, Sebastian here, as far as I can tell. Let me look at his stupid TikTok to make sure. TikTok Sebastian Douchebag. He's the CEO of his alpha male course that he sells, speaker and performance coach. Message me on IG. <laughs> Listen, he has 1.2 million followers on TikTok and he's still encouraging people to message him on Instagram. I have like three tenths of what he has on YouTube and I would never encourage someone to, to DM me on Instagram. Like there's a good chance I won't read it. I don't have the time to that. Like how are you the CEO of whatever you're doing? 
doing and you're reading those messages and getting back to people like I don't buy it There's something fishy I don't know if you bought these followers or if you just don't do anything all day and you're just a clout monster But either way, I don't see anything in there about being a psychologist or somebody who knows anything about human behavior So tell me why you're so eager to assert your understanding of the difference between men and women and also Using the women in your life as test subjects to like make this theory come to life for all of these desperately horny men who wish that they could bag half the women that you do. Don't talk about bagging women, by the way. That's like super kidnappy. I know he didn't say it, but I'm assuming he would kidnap a woman if he could. <laughs> Allegedly, it's an opinion. I had two friends, equally beautiful. One girl, no guy will even f with. Other girl is getting hit on left and right in the most inappropriate ways. I knew both of their backstories. One was very whole, healthy, had a complete identity. All the sh guys were like, don't f with that one. It was the whole energy. They just knew. The other girl, very broken, had some really sh things happen in her path. Her energy was validate me. And I was sitting with both of them. So we had a discussion about it later. Oh, I get it. So what you're telling us with this story is that the women who go out with you feel safer using the buddy system. All right, ladies, you heard him. Pair up if you're at all curious about whether this guy's attitude is inversely or directly proportional to the function of his penis. Oh, we had a discussion about it later as a punishment for one of them calling me smarmy. Oh, I wish I were a fly on the wall for that discussion. Sarah, only shitty guys wanted to sleep with you tonight because because they could sniff out how your stepdad sexualized you as a teenager. And Jessica, no men wanted to sleep with you tonight because you have brown hair and an office job. I'd be like, oh, very insightful. We don't know why women didn't want to sleep with you. Although somebody in the ladies room did ask why our friend was sweating through a silk vest in a nightclub and mentioned that you look like an involuntarily celibate Atticus Finch. So I don't know if that helps. Imagine being so proud of yourself for not gossiping and then using this story about two women who went out with you and telling about their backstories as like proof of your intelligence. And just in general, don't tell me that you don't like to gossip. At best, that means you're no fun to work with at Starbucks. And at worst, you're not a girl's girl. Face it, Sebastian, if this were the 1800s, you would be accusing your own wife of witchcraft just to distract from your own well-documented impotence. There's not a lentil stew with a frog in it that could ever save that. You need modern medicine, which was invented by women. Nurses save lives. Men can be nurses too, but you know, historically, women were nurses. There's a lot of misogyny in the gay community as well. Like cis gay men often overlook the the role that women, both cis straight women and lesbian and queer women, trans women, women of all kinds played during like the gay rights movement and also the AIDS epidemic. It was up to the women, either trans or lesbian or just straight ally women who rallied around gay men and they saved lives and they, they helped ease the trauma of many people who were suffering like the greatest tragedy of their lives. You know, it's like, that's that's not often commended enough, I don't I don't think. A trans woman threw the first brick at Stonewall, you fing idiot. I don't know who I'm talking to now, but I'm passionate about it. What I love about Sebastian here is that he's trying so hard to come off like he knows everything he's saying is a fact when I don't even know that he's done the basic research. Like for example, that statistic about men not gossiping when they in fact do, why not as a academic, a scholar of human behavior, help unpack why do men gossip but they're seen as networking where women are seen as like gossiping. You can't even get through that surface level sexism to understand the basics of human behavior. So it's no one why the rest of this stuff, the facts that you're spewing are not even factual. They're just things that you think you remember. Oh, well, look at how many people go bankrupt after signing big ass contracts. In fact, there was a dude who wrote a book. I need to buy it and like frame it so I can talk about this more. I believe the name of the book is I Want My Life Back. There was a guy in Arkansas, I think his, he won $85 million and within five years was bankrupt. I believe he was going to prison or was being indicted. Did you say you need to buy the book and frame it? Because it sounds like you need to buy the book and read it there, Pocket Watch Johnny. He's like, there was this book that changed my life and it was about this dude who had a terrible home life as a child. I believe he had no parents because they were abandoning him or they were murdered perhaps. And then on his 11th birthday, or maybe it was his 12th birthday, he found out he was a wizard. Then he spent the rest of his days having fun adventures at a school for witchcraft, or I believe it was wizardry. Don't quote me on this. I am not yet ready for chapter books. Like, okay, guy, maybe don't post that as a highlight on your Instagram of your big speech. If it's like just you making conjecture about a book that you did not read and you do not know any of the facts for sure on. He's like, yeah, but I know I, I read like an article about the book, about the headline of the book um, in Oprah's Favorite Things last June. Okay, well, I paid $2,000 to hear you talk about this and all I'm getting is some hunk in a 
and vest who needs to shave why does his hairstyle and beard length change so frequently between these videos it's like did you do these once a year for the last three years and you're just trying to milk as much content as you can out of it i ask i ask you deeply you can dm me sebastian Enguez. if you see this video i would love for you to dm me it'll be in my request folder so i might not get back to you until my beard is the length of an old wizard but you know then we can dumbledore each other on a fun train. Why did I say that? Why did I say that? <laughs> He's not not hot, but like that kind of makes it more douchey when someone's hot and saying this kind of shit. Like, girl, take a page from the book of Dwayne Men's Coach on TikTok. He manages to be just as douchey without all of that hotness. Society has lied to all of us about our gender roles. They told women they don't need no man, and they told men to be softer. You want to know the problem with this? It's completely backwards to our biological wiring. Sir, you were hired to tell us about our electrical wiring and whether or not we needed to buy a new dishwasher. So maybe we could jump ahead to that stage of human evolution in this conversation. Like, let's get real. Your rating on Yelp has already dropped three stars since you asked to use our bathroom as soon as you got here. Like you were too good for the deep forest ditch we dug out for the straight men that some of our guests bring with them. That's two stars you have remaining. Are you really sure you want to Bill and I, the science guy, us right now? Okay. This this is Dwayne, and he's got his finger on the pulse of what makes men men. That's right, he's in the business where men work. Are you a guy that plays video games? Let me tell you a story. So I was doing a job the other day, changing out a water heater. That is once again as much of that story as I'm willing to allow you to tell, because all I heard there was that you are a full-time contractor, even though I don't think that was one of the hashtag job titles in your TikTok bio, was it? I mean, we have hashtag men's coach, hashtag divorced dude, hashtag estranged father. Wow, that says so much about you, except for what you actually do for a living or any of your qualifications for doing those things. Okay, I doubt it. I doubt, I don't see it for me, but not all of these douchebags are aspiring douchebags. Some of them have actually written self-published books. Allow me to introduce you to Dave Deeply Coaching. Competition to my neighbor whose username is Dave Deeply Fisting. Different like approaches to the same science. He understands why men are no longer masculine, which is a, such a concrete term, you know? It's not subjective at all. Like what does masculine mean? We know exactly what it means. There's a scientific measurement for it. So we can say that men are less this or that. As you may know, I'm gender non-binary which for me essentially means I do not subscribe to this idea that there is a masculine or feminine. Like what does masculine mean? What does feminine mean? Nothing if you disregard what puritanical colonials have like imposed upon people in Western society since they started killing natives hundreds of years ago. This is all Christian bullshit. I don't need it. I don't need it. Biologically, yes, there may be male and female people in terms of how they play a role in reproduction, but that is no longer an issue. People reproduce without any genitals, you know, like being involved in it. There's insemination there's ex vitro fertilization. Like what are we doing by then in telling me what I can or can't do, We're telling anybody what they can and can't do. But you know, Dave's here to tell us exactly why I'm wrong about all that. A man who needs to be praised is a man who wants to be mothered. Ladies, stop praising your man. A man who wants to be praised, a man who wants reassurance, is a man wallowing in his wounded feminine energy. This, ladies and gentlemen, is trauma. And so a man, when he was a child, if he experienced too much coddling, too much spoiling, too much sappy praise, too much overgiving from either his mother or father, then as a man as he's growing up, will want and crave praise and reassurance and a constant need for someone else to tell him that he belongs. Is it just me or are his hand gestures on absolute crack right now? Can someone take the cell phone away from Pop Pop? He forgot to take his beta blockers and now he's making two minute long TikTok videos of pure rambling again. Anyway, according to David, men's masculine energy gets traumatized when they receive too much praise as children, which is great parenting advice for those who would like to raise a serial killer. Be withholding to your sons, it will make them better at watching football games. I seriously doubt that David Lee was not excessively praised for the things he did as a child. This is the exact prototype of a man who acts like he's been told his eye color was pretty way too often in his life. It doesn't mean you can let go of the rest of your face. And if his mom didn't love everything he did, there is no way he would have the confidence to talk into his camera for 120 seconds with nothing more than his angry bird arm motions to try and entertain us. Like, where's the B-roll, sis? That is not a good content strategy. And I'm sorry you didn't have a mother or a gay uncle who is smart enough to make sure that you you knew you needed to go do some theater classes or some shit if you had any point on being in front of the public eye. See that? I'm allowed to believe that your parents 
you up. It goes both ways. Hmm. Anyway, let me calm down. I should probably give David a another chance. Since right now, the only thing I know for sure about his philosophy on being a man's man is that it makes him above having to wear any sort of concealer when sitting in direct sunlight recording himself on an iPhone with the entire solar system glaring off of his broken capillaries. What do I know? Luckily, he did kind of sum up all of his beliefs on the topic into one easy to read graphic. Let's read it to dive in deeper to his beliefs as a men's coach. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was gonna be quite this text heavy or in a scrolling carousel. Slow down, David, I'm trying to read. God damn, it's like trying to read the first page of Moby Dick off the side of a bus. I saw something about your face being in pain. I guess that explains the redness. I, God, this is hard. Okay, you know what? F it. This whole manifesto is secondary to his cool and confident body language in the photo itself. See the one that his wife took of him on the porch? That's a power pose that says, I reserve my right to bear arms now that I've cured my plaque psoriasis with Otesla. But for real, even if you're a woman who's trying to understand what it means to be a woman and serve men and everything that you do, or if you're some other gender that like we don't even consider real, then perhaps you should go default over to David's wife, who he brought over into the fold of his business because because someone needs to give a feminine touch to the ladies who don't know what the f is going on. And don't worry, you'll get the same hip on the pulse social media content strategy from two people who refer to their TikToks as a TikTok channel. TikTok, TikTok channel. No one calls it that, but thank you so much, lady and gent. We are so happy to be masculine and masculine forever here on the Nick Doremio Masculine channel. We're rebranding. What did you guys think of your masculinity today? Does it feel like it's throbbing and hard and engorged like a huge masculine d let me know in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more rock hard masculinity courses like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. It would mean so much to me if you subscribe and engage with this video as I'm trying to repair my algorithmic disadvantage that might be coming my way thanks to YouTube and me. But also thank you for your support. I mean so much to me. I also have merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus watch parties and episodes. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for getting your power pose and no Tesla injections with me today. I will see you next time. Yeah.